Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Men, and today I wanted to talk about iodine, atomic number 53. Iodine is the heaviest stable halogen element, and it is unique among them where it is a metallic solid at room temperature and sublimates directly to a violet gas. If you want to speed this up and you have iodine as a solid, you can hit it with a heat gun like I am here. I've got it in a beaker and we're just warming it up so that it sublimates faster and you can see the violet gas coming off of it. Iodine was discovered in 1811 and is named after a Greek word which means violet colored. You can see it's a very appropriate name. There are two forms of iodine that are important in reef tanks. Iodide, a single atom of iodine, and iodate, an iodine atom and three oxygen atoms. Depending on the actual animal, it will use one of these two things and some of them even convert from one to another. Uh, phytoplankton or a single-celled algae is an important thing that does that. In the ocean, iodine is usually around 0.06 parts per million. However, that varies significantly with where exactly you measure it. So that's kind of an average value. You don't need to necessarily target that specifically in your tank. Definitely um, play around with it, see what level works best in your tank. Don't go much above that. You can go down to zero without much detriment. There are two types of iodine that we use in our tank. We have Logol's solution, which can be used as a dose in your tank to raise the level of iodine, but is more commonly used as a dip when you're trying to uh, fix a bacterial infection in coral. It's actually been used since 1829 as a disinfectant, and it is a disinfectant because diiodine is very reactive. It's an oxidizer, and it's the active part of Logol's that makes it actually work as a dip or a disinfectant. You can even use Logol's to disinfect drinking water in an emergency. If say you're camping or you know, natural disaster happens, you could use it in small amounts to sanitize your water. The other main thing that people dose is potassium iodide. Potassium iodide, like this made by Brightwell, is just a solution of potassium iodide and water. This one, I think it says is, um, they don't tell you how much is actually in there, but they guarantee that it's going to be at least 15,000 parts per million iodine. Potassium iodide is actually also used to iodize salt. If you go to the store and you buy salt, at least here in America, most of the time you're buying iodized salt. That's a mixture of salt and ACL and potassium iodide. And that's because most of the things that we eat here in America don't contain iodine. And so you don't get it as part of your diet if you don't take it as a supplement. And they found that it's easier to just put it in salt than it is to get people to go out and buy a specific supplement. And that's what they do here in America, at least. Iodide is the most directly used kind of iodine in our tank. It's used very much by marine allergies in our tank. And it could be even up to 1% iodine by weight. So if you were to pull out some catamorpha, depending on the exact species you have, dry it out and then analyze what it's actually made of, you might find that it, it is 1% iodine by weight or even up to 1,100 parts per million iodine. Most things that use iodine in our tank actually use it to deter other things from eating it. That's why, say, catamorpha can be such high iodine. Plants that have a lot of iodine in it don't taste good to fish that eat plants. And so it will survive more in the wild by having this high level of iodine in it. Other things that use iodine in our tank, we have some Gorgonia sea fans use iodine when building their skeletons. Tunicates use iodine to make something called Leuconol B. It's a toxic compound and, you know, things that are toxic don't get eaten. Other things that use it, sponges, they use iodine again to make toxic compounds, makes them distasteful. Worms and shrimp both use iodine in their bodies as they grow. So adding some iodine can help your gorgonians, they can help your shrimp. It's actually required for the skeleton of a shrimp. And um, that's one reason why you might consider dosing iodine. Another reason that you might consider dosing iodine is something that I wasn't able to find actual like science papers on, but lots of references to it on forums. If you have any blue acropora and it's not looking very blue anymore, you might have an iodine deficiency in your tank. If you check your iodine, it's low, bring it up to 0.06 parts per million, and your blue acropora might look more blue. When you're testing for iodine, keep in mind that there are actually many different kinds of iodine in our seawater. 
each test kit, each brand of test kit, tests in a slightly different way. And so if you were to say use a, um, I don't know, a Kent Marine, let's just make one up, a Kent Marine uh, test kit, and then you were to use a ATI test kit, they would probably be using different chemistry to detect iodine and they would read different amounts because there are different types of iodine in your water at different levels. The most consistent way to test for iodine then is to use ICP analysis, like ATI's ICP analysis or Triton. These though are not particularly sensitive to iodine because iodine's wavelength is very similar to phosphorus. And if the ICP machine is just slightly out of calibration, the phosphorus can uh, sort of swamp out the iodine that's in the water. I hope this was interesting. Let me know if you have any questions about iodine. I'm happy to try to help you figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.